Hi there, this is Josh Duncan. I'm joined tonight by a special guest, uh, Saheed. Why don't you introduce yourself? So, uh, who are you and what do you do? Sure, thanks, Josh. Uh, my name is Saeed Khan. I'm a product manager by day in a software company, and by evenings and weekends, I guess I'm a blogger on onproductmanagement.net. All right, so we wanted to talk, uh, let's talk a little bit about Product Camp Boston. I'd love to hear your assessment. Uh, you know, give us the, the bird's eye view of uh, how was the sessions, what did you think of the event? Um, just kind of love hearing how, how it went. Sure. Actually, uh, it was really interesting. Uh, I've been, I'm here in Toronto, so I've been to uh, the product camps here. Uh, I made it to the New York product camp in the fall, and uh, then uh, on the same weekend as there were two other product camps in Chicago and Silicon Valley, there was the Boston one, and I thought I'd head out there, and I like Boston, I have friends out there, so uh, it was a good event. I think there were about 200 people uh, that showed up, maybe a bit more than 200. Uh, it was, I think, about 30 plus sessions on a wide variety of topics, and uh, it was good. I mean, you know, like any conference, some things were better than others. You know, there were some sessions that were well attended, some sessions weren't. But um, it was an interesting mix, and the uh, the irony was that uh, the keynote speaker was actually a guy from my university here in Canada, University of Waterloo, although he graduated a few years before me. And uh, it was interesting to hear his perspective, having lived and worked in the United States for quite a while uh, in, in high tech, and now he's at Boston University. So. Uh, uh, the, there was a competing event, though, going on, aside from the product camps, which is the World Cup cricket final oh, yeah. uh, in India, uh, or India versus Sri Lanka. And uh, So the second most common question after when does the next session start was, what's the score? <laughs> <laughs> there, there are actually people streaming the, uh, the, the match live, so uh, courtesy of Microsoft's bandwidth. That, that doesn't surprise me. I, I don't know. I'm assuming it was just a coincidence, but the fact that there was actually, you know, Boston, Silicon Valley, and um, oh boy, I'm blanking, Chicago, Chicago, all on yeah. the same day. I mean, geez, that's uh, that's quite a lineup there. Yeah, I, I I'm assuming it was coincidence. I have my doubts that you know we're, we're that coordinated just yet. Uh, but it was you know you had one on the east coast, one on the west coast, and one in central, so it was, it was kind of perfect distribution. Yeah, I was um, I wasn't able to go to any of them. It's it, it, it's hard. Um, Hard to get the you know the budget to travel and stuff kind of when you're independent, but um, I have to say I just love watching on Twitter just the stream of tweets kind of start on the East Coast, light up Central, and then end on the yes. West Coast. It, it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. No, I I, I was trying to tweet. It, I'm not a sort of regular tweeter in terms of you know what I'm doing during the day, but I, I tried my best to sort of uh, you know add to the conversation during the day. Yeah, yeah, it's it's neat, especially for all of us that are kind of watching vicariously and kind of getting stuff remote. And then it's great, you know, afterwards seeing everyone's presentations online. I think that's a great segue into your presentation here: uh, how to create an effective and scalable product management organization. And uh, the first question, I well, first question slash comment that uh, when I saw you blogged about it, the first uh, thing I noticed was the giant Superman character with the big X across the front of it, which I uh, which I, I got a kick out of. So let's let's start there because. Uh, you know, what do you have against rock stars? <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing against rock stars, and in fact, I have nothing against superheroes. I, I'm a big X Men fanatic, but I think they have their place. And yep. I think the problem is simply that, you know, first, people don't understand product management. They they really don't. I and mean, a lot of people who are in product management actually don't understand product management. But what typically happens is uh, people want a do it all product manager. So you know, they want the rock star. They want the superhero who can you know, get deep down technical, who can go and understand the business, can work with marketing, can go external, go internal, everything, right? And and, and I've seen job ads where literally that's what they describe. Yeah. And, and, you know, fine. You find a person that fits. Yeah. And then what, right? And that's, you know, one of the common complaints you hear is, it's really hard to find good product managers. Well, you know, the reason is because you're asking the impossible. You're asking for people who don't really exist. And when you do find them, great, and then you want to replicate them. And you can't do that. You can't continuously find that. It's like, it's like building a hockey team and everyone's a center. So everyone's, you know, the Wayne Gretzky. They can shoot, they can skate, they can, you know, get up and down the ice. Oh, but you have no goalie. So guess what? Like, things don't really work out that well. And, and, and that's the problem, right? Like, you can't build an organization with rock stars, right? So, you know, you can't have five guitar players. Yeah. I mean, it just doesn't work unless that's literally exactly what you want. You need, you need people who, you know, the drummer, the bass player, you need the lead, you need the keyboardist, whatever, the horns, however you want to build your group. 
And and the same with superheroes. Like you can't have you know I, the example I used in my presentation of Superman. You can't build an organization of all Superman. Right. 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 And and that's that's the problem. Right? So you don't people don't understand product management. They don't define the role properly. Then they try and build a team with poorly defined roles, and then things don't work out. And then they go, oh, product management sucks. And mm-hmm. then they you know fire the product managers and tell the engineers to go build things or whatever. And, I mean, it's, it's this weird, vicious circle that's been going on for way too long. And so I think that's really the problem I'm trying to sort of uh, talk about. And the interesting thing is there's been a huge response. I mean, we, we saw some really great traffic on our site, and lots of people are commenting. And so there's a real issue out there to yeah. try and fix this. And, and the funny thing is, you know, if you ever said, how do you build a sales team or how do you build a marketing team, no one would say, well, we just need... 20 all-star marketers or something. No, they think, you know, we need different types of people who have different skill sets who work together, who have objectives. Yet that same kind of thinking doesn't apply when they talk about product management. No, no, I, I really like the analogy and how the, the slide where you had the, the scalability because it, it makes great sense. You know, everyone, everyone wants to be a rock star and you always want to hire rock stars, but then you start thinking over time as you mature the organization, well, that's not going to be scalable. I mean, that really isn't repeatable. So the the... I'm not probably as good on the hockey analogy as you are, but uh, let's go. Let's go with the football analogy, um, or just maybe just in general the team analogy. Where should product management be when it comes to the organization to really, you know, really deliver the results that product management should be delivering? So uh, I have a very strong opinion on this. Some people say it doesn't matter yeah. uh, where it sits. I think I think that's absolutely wrong. I think where it sits actually defines how it functions. And so I think product management, I mean, if you think about it, right, people talk about product management, oh, it's a very strategic role, it's really key to our business, yeah. oh, but we'll put it over under engineering, because, you know, that's the place to put really strategic key roles. I mean, product management should be a peer with marketing, with sales, with engineering, I mean, it should, you know, I, I use the phrase, a seat at the table, and product yeah. management needs to have a seat at the table, and you need to have experienced executives, and you need to have, you know, people on the team who can get things done and business focus, etc. So uh, to me, it's just another department in the organization that is, you know, no different than any others, right? And it follows the same kind of structures and guidelines and, you know, behaves in, in a rational, coherent way. So the, the seat at the table, 100% agree with you there. If you don't have a seat at the table, when it comes to making business decisions, you're, you're really not strategic, right? If, if you're not yeah. there... You're, you're just not involved. I think that the, the debate that I see a lot of people get into, and I just, I'd just love to hear your thoughts on it, is at some point, well, product management, you know, what seat at the table are they taking? Are they rolling into the chief marketing officer, you know, the head of engineering? Are they the chief product developer? Developer. I mean, where, you know, should product depart, uh, development, product management, excuse my uh, slip, um, be its own head at that chief table? Yeah, absolutely. That's what I mean. Sorry, I didn't say that explicitly, but that, that's exactly what I mean. That, you know, there's marketing, there's a you know CMO or VP of marketing, whatever you want to call it, and equivalent no of sales, and there should be an equivalent of product management. And there should be no, you know, real debate about that if you really understand why you have a product management team. Yeah. Right? If you don't understand it and you think, oh, well, you know, it's just a bunch of requirements collectors, then yeah, like, that makes no sense. But then that's a false understanding of what product management is about. 